So those don't help, and that's going to be competition. Those are bad signs, not only because they are there, but, but because they show us that some schools are learning to do what we did a few years ago. Um, we were written up in, uh, in an article that said it was focused on us and a couple of other schools, and said, what did they do to get ahead? And some of the things that were written in the article happened to be true, and so now, <laughs> so now the people can read that article and say, well, that's what they did. Uh, we should do the same thing, and some schools are starting to do the same thing. So the competition is getting even tougher. But you can see those are big moves, uh, big moves in terms of uh, ranking places. Uh, we also have some ambiguous news. Uh, University of Illinois, uh, 23 to 35. Uh, California Davis, 23 to 29. Uh, Illinois moved because of the, uh, the peer rating that went down from 3.5 to 3.1. That was the main reason that they moved down. And the question, we don't, why is it ambiguous? Because we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Maybe it's pretty clear that the peers, those are the other academics that rate law schools in the survey done by U.S. News, uh, the peers might continue to punish them for lots of cheating. Uh, <laughs> or, or the peers might stop punishing them for lying and cheating. And if they stop punishing them, at that point, Illinois will probably rise back in the rankings to something around uh, our level. So, uh, so it, we've got a temporary boost from that, but it's not clear that it's a permanent boost. Um, the, uh, you can thank your lucky stars. You didn't take that offer from the University of Illinois. <laughs> Uh, on, the, on the flip side, I suppose I should have gone back on the previous slide. Uh, if you had, if you had uh, full scholarships from some of these schools and you relied, you relied on U.S. News ranking in order not to take the full scholarship, and you came here instead, you were some of the few, I think, that have standing to sue U.S. News <laughs> for the inaccuracy of their previous year's ranking. Right? You relied on it to your detriment, as proved by their own ranking. Uh, and so, uh, Sue, I recommend it. All right. All right. So, uh, so, so, no, so, thank your lucky stars. You didn't rely on uh, U.S. News for the Illinois ranking last year uh, because it's uh, of this year. California Davis also made a small uh, drop down. They moved up on the up on the LSAT and they moved up on the bar pass ratio. Uh, but they uh, moved down on employment at graduation and at nine months, and those two things pretty much killed them. I should have mentioned at this point that U.S. News gives all California schools a bump, a, be a benefit, because basically they've got a, a weaker peer group to compete against in the bar pass rate, all right? So they have a low state bar pass rate because a lot of people take uh, the, uh, the bar there, and a lot of people who are not really qualified to take the bar. And, the, uh, and so the good schools look really great because they can compare their bar pass ratio, their bar pass rate, sorry, their bar pass rate to, uh, to 65%. And that's a pretty low standard, so they get a high mark against that standard. And in the end, it's 81% uh, for the state. So it's harder, harder to do much better than uh, the state bar pass ratio. So, so all California schools, basically all good schools, but all of them get, uh, get a bump just because of the way U.S. News does their bar pass ratio comparisons. All right, so how do these big jumps happen? Right, why are they jumping around by 10 points or 14 points or whatever in the rankings? And, uh, and there's an answer to that, and this is it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is me on the exam. <laughs> All right, so what is, what's the answer that's embedded in this graph? The fact that it's fairly flat. You can see that it doesn't take very many points to move over a lot of other schools. That's that's what happens with rankings. Instead of using ratings, a small change in your rating may result in a large change in your ranking. Okay, it's because for the most part, it's a pretty, uh, it's a graph that slopes down fairly, uh, fairly slowly, and so that's what allows people to move around a lot by not changing much, and yet they get a lot of change in uh, their rank. All right, so what do these numbers mean? <laughs> Could a person uh, rationally choose Berkeley over Yale? You might say no, but I think you'd be wrong. Uh, a person could rationally choose to go to Berkeley over Yale. Uh, it's six places different in rank. And if you look, instead of looking at the rank, if you look instead at the, at the points, even under U.S. News, we'll talk a little bit more about those points we already have with regard to bar pass ratio, but we'll talk a little bit more about the points. But if you look at the points, the difference between Yale and Berkeley is the same as the difference between the University of Missouri at Kansas City, which is 135 in the ranking, and LSU, which is 79. All right. So there you're looking at a difference of what? Uh, I can't even do the math. The, uh, about 55, 56, something like that. Uh, 56 places. Oh, sorry. I already figured it out. <laughs> So, less than read your own slides. <laughs> All right, so the, 
uh, so 56 places is the same difference in score as six places is at the top of the ranking. If you could be rational choosing Berkeley over Yale, you can be rational choosing LSU over UMKC. The same difference, according to US News, now I'm not saying it's the same difference, but according to US News and their scores, that's the same difference. 56 places in the ranking. Okay, the same as the top six. And a person could rationally choose Berkeley over Yale for lots of reasons. All right, so you can see that that's what happens when you get this low sloping curve is you get uh, basically a lot of schools bunched together that are really pretty similar in overall quality if we think this is a measure of overall quality. All right. And, uh, but they look a lot different because they're ranked instead of just being rated. All right. Um, so same thing here, same story here. Basically, Kansas and Case Western, 22 points different. Harvard and Yale. Did you choose Harvard over Yale? Then you could choose Kansas over Case Western, 22 point difference. All right, that's how closely bunched a lot of the schools are. Um, <coughs> five, five points apart. All right, so rank doesn't mean a lot a lot of the time, and I think it doesn't mean a lot in the context of law school comparisons. Okay, because it doesn't really matter your first or not. Sometimes rank matters. Sometimes rank matters a lot. If you win the presidential election, it's a lot different from losing the presidential election. <laughs> first and second are a long way away from each other. All right? If you win the litigation, it's a lot different from losing the litigation. First and second are a long way away from each other. Being in competition for a CEO, uh, being in the NC2A uh, uh, tournament, being first, a lot different from being second. All right? Maybe not quite as much different as being president or not. But, uh, but still, there are th places where rank ends up mattering a lot, where only the first wins and the second doesn't get, uh, doesn't get much. Um, but often it matters little. In fact, in, I think most things in life, it matters little. Music. Does it really matter whether your favorite is your favorite or your second favorite, or where, whether you are the performer or the first favorite or the second favorite of some person? Not at all. The rank doesn't really matter. Um, the amount of difference does. The person who really doesn't like their second place and does like their first place music, they don't matter. But that's the rate, not the rating, not the ranking. All right. So beer, likewise, friends, legal advisors, all the advice that you will give. Giving good advice is important, whether it's this much better or this much worse than some other advice doesn't matter too much as long as you give them good advice. The uh, teachers, it doesn't matter too much whether I'm a little bit better than my colleagues or a little bit worse than my colleagues. Uh, the rank doesn't matter. The quality of the teaching uh, is what matters. And what an ordinal ranking does is it throws away all that information about the actual differences and just puts them in, in a rank order. So it's really not very useful information. All right, so um, the US, U.S. News and World Report in the past combined ranks. This is one of the big things that they did wrong in the big end. They, did, they combined ranks on the five criteria that they had and then added up the ranks. So they threw away all the relative difference information that they had, all the cardinal information that they had. They threw it all away and said, let's just combine the ranks. Okay, and then they got some results. All right, now why would they do this? <coughs> Well, one of the answers, the cynical view, the cynical answer was they combined ranks because, as you saw a minute ago, you can jump a lot in rank from a small change in rating, a small change in quality, if it is quality. Um, so, they thought, so people would say they must be combining ranks so that they get more jumping around in their ranking. That will sell more magazines each year because last year's ranking doesn't matter, this year's ranking does, and people have jumped around a lot. And so that's the cynical view. But I don't think that's right. The, uh, when I first saw what they were doing, or thought I saw what, I, what they were doing, I walked into Professor Hoffman's office, it was the closest door I could find. And, uh, <laughs> and I said, can you believe they would do this? Uh, they would combine ranks, that doesn't make any sense at all. They're throwing away all this information that they already have in their database. Um, and he said, well, maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Let's find out if they're really doing that. They said they were doing that, and that was But I, it's hard to believe that they would do that. So he had a source for the data that US News was using in their ranking. So we got the data, and then we started working on it. And we worked on it, worked on it, to try to reconstruct the, rank, the rankings from the data and come out with the, out, with the outcome that they had. So we were going through and making changes and, and, and multiplying and dividing and doing whatever we needed to do to combine these scores to get the ranking. We ended up being able to replicate it perfectly. Okay, so we basically had the formula. All right, so that's one lesson, leads me to one lesson, which is never assume bad faith when ignorance is being taught. All right, so what, most people are not trying to do evil, all right? A lot of people, 
and when it comes to, they may be ignorant instead, and especially when it comes to numbers. A lot of people are ignorant when it comes to numbers. And so if you can explain it with ignorance, just do that. Don't assume that is that is that. All right. So rankings are often based on ratings. Not all, sometimes people just rank things and don't rate them. But uh, they're often based on, rate, on rating scores. And the differences in scores might matter. The question next is whether the differences in scores uh, matters. Do they reflect something important? OK, so that brings us to the second part of what we might get out, what we might get out of US News, or what we might criticize US News for. All right, so what are the things that go into the scores that they use to make the rankings? One of them is the median LSAT. All right, so what does this predict? Well, you know what it's designed to predict. It's designed to predict, and does a moderately good job of predicting your first year grades in law school. That's what the whole point of the LSAT is, to predict first year grades in law school. Nothing else about life, nothing that might matter in any other way. First year grades in law school, that's it. <laughs> That's what it's focused on. That's its purpose. All right. So, um, so how does it? So that fits into the rankings, right? They give it a lot of weight, one eighth of the total ranking, twelve and a half percent, and they say this is really important. What the LSAT, the median LSAT, is for the class of students that's coming in each year. So, that's okay. They can choose that for whatever reason. Is that good for you? If you're a person leading the rankings and trying to decide where should I go to law school, how does this? Is this a good thing or a bad thing? What would you choose? You've got two law schools of exactly the same rank to choose their tie in US News. And you find out that one has higher LSAT, school A, and one has lower median LSAT. And you can figure the other numbers out as well. It's not just the median, but the whole distribution. Which one do you choose? Well, one might thing you might think about is where will I get better grades? Grades matter some. I prefer all else equal to have a little better grades rather than worse grades. Some people try to be the anchor of the class, but not everybody. <laughs> <laughs> everybody so, there's a competition there too, I know. Uh, and that's where it does matter. If you're really last, it's much better than being second to last. Uh, so, all right, so where are, you, where are you likely to get better grades? The whole purpose of this test was to predict your grades in law school. So, and it does a moderately good job at that. So, you're likely to get better grades if you go to the school with the lower LSAT, right? That's where your competition is weaker. You ought to be going to the school. Do they make it a negative factor in the rankings? Of course not, it's a positive fact. They're telling you you should want to go to the school with a higher LSAT, but that's completely backwards. You should want to go all else equal. You should want to go to the school with the lower uh, LSAT. All right, so, well maybe you think um, the selectivity of the school will mean more earnings later. Well, this has been studied not with law schools, unfortunately. I would love somebody to do that, but uh, by Stacy Bird Bale and Alan B. Kruger, uh, economists, and so what do economists look at? Earnings, of course, that's, uh, that's the bottom line. And I'm, I'm not against that. Sometimes earnings help. The, uh, they looked at the LSAT and whether the schools that were more selective on the LSAT, they compared especially Penn and Penn State, and Pennsylvania people here, I hope not. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> close your ears for just a half a minute. The, uh, all right. So, uh, and the University of Penn, a private school, an Ivy League school, didn't do any better as a result of being more selective on the SAT than, than Penn State did. Okay, so at least one study indicates that not only is it a backward indicator in terms of where you'll get better grades, but it doesn't even mean when the school is more selective on that criterion that you will earn more because you went to that school. Not true. Okay, so it's not a good predictor for that reason. And then you also have to ask yourself, how did the school that has a lower LSAT get to the same rank? It must be better on something else. And maybe the something else matters. Maybe the something else is a positive thing. And so really that's the better school to go to because it's positive on some matter, on some criterion where it's important to you and, uh, and to the school both. So some hidden factor may be in there, and that may be something good, like the amount of money that the school spends on the students, right? The more pizza you get, the, the now pancakes, uh, the happier you are. Yeah, I didn't anticipate the pancake thing. Um, all right. I should have known. But I didn't. So 
from the applicant's point of view, it seems to me that the LSAT is, should be a negative factor instead of a positive factor, but instead it's a positive factor with a big weight in the ranking. So the ranking's got it backwards. From your point of view, from other points of view, maybe it's a good thing. All right, how about the undergraduate GPA? The same story applies here. More competition, you shouldn't want to get into the higher competition, that would be even with the lower competition, all right? And it's 10%. Now we've got almost a quarter of the ranking made up with a backward set of factors, right? <laughs> Telling you exactly the opposite of what you want to know. <laughs> All right, but once again, um, be careful that this leads to another lesson when you're, and that is never assume <coughs> ignorance when it could be empathy. And I had a story here to tell you, but I could blame it on the time, but I won't. I'll be honest. I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> to do with my Wilson class press class on here. But, uh, <laughs> so I never assume it was Uh, so 
I choose the school that's not focused on the test. We don't want teaching to the test, and yet that's what this measurement says, is teach to the test. Uh, so I think this is a harmful one as well. Um, so what's missing? And millions of things are missing. I'm just going to come up with a quick list of a few. Uh, measure of teaching quality. They've got nothing. All right? They've got nothing to indicate is this good teaching or bad teaching uh, that's going on in the school. Um, quality of life on campus. Undergraduate rankings. All right? One of the things that you might care about is whether you're sexually assaulted while you're on the campus. All right? It might be more important than the acceptance rate. All right? But Dartmouth, number 11. All right? Twice the chances. Twice the chances of sexual assault. If you read about it in uh, uh, Rolling Stone. All right, so well, here's one that might matter. Romances. How many people ended their romance in law school or started a romance in law school? Now that is a big factor. Right? It's something we ought to care about a lot. <laughs> Down like 95% of the weight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And price. Price could matter as well. None of those things go into uh, the rankings. All right. Here's a factor that actually is, is in the rankings and should probably matter. Okay, so here's one I think that they get right, at least to a degree. The placement at graduation, the placement nine months later, uh, both of those matter, whether you get a job. Okay. The problem with this one is not that they have it or not that they give it a substantial weight, but that they don't have it. Data. Once again, I said that they rely on the ABA data. And what's the ABA data? It's just all jobs. It's just all jobs. Now, the ABA is collect I don't want to completely blame the ABA here because the ABA has been collect collecting data for a long, long time, long before US News was doing its ranking. So they didn't have the misuse of data uh, it went in mind at the time that they started collecting this data. They should have figured out a few years ago, at least, that now it's being misused and have focused more closely on law-related jobs or law jobs where you get something out of your law degree, that would be the important thing, right? Whether you're flipping burgers or throwing pancakes is not something you care too much about uh, with regard to your law degree. And so, so they should gather better data. If they gather, gather better data at the ABA, then we'd have better data to go to the rankings. But as it is right now, as you know, any job counts. And so uh, a lot of schools may look pretty similar that aren't similar in terms of their ability to produce jobs for their students. Okay. So, uh, so that's an important factor, uh, one that deserves a lot of weight. Maybe it ought to be 95% if romances are not. And, uh, uh, but we just don't have good data that goes into the rankings, so you're really not. Uh, they've got a good idea, but not well executed. Um, all right, so on this one, though, of course, with regard to us and our ranking, which is how we started this, you can help us out. You can help us out a lot. Get a job! <laughs> us, and it's good for you. All right. So, besides getting a job, what else can you do to uh, increase your happiness? Uh, have some friends. Happiness <laughs> research. I know people make fun of researchers for finding out things that everybody already knew, but this happens to be true. That having friends makes you happier. Spend some time with your good friends. All right, what else? Avoid long daily car commutes and heavy traffic. That's not good for you. Uh, and more. And landlords and agents. <laughs> and uh, enjoy the happiness of others. The more you can empathize and get enjoyment when other people are getting enjoyment, the more happy you will be. Uh, change your job if it doesn't fit you. Lawyers have an opportunity to lead wonderfully rewarding lives and, uh, and helping people out, feeling great about what they're doing. And if you're not doing that in a job, you can change. You can find another job where you will be able to do that with your law degree. You're one of the lucky few that has the opportunity in your life to do something that you can feel really good about. And you should, you should try to do that, I think. Uh, you can feel great about your life. But well, I said this in one of my classes one year, years ago, um, and, uh, and a student came back to me a few years later and said, I did just what you said. I said, what are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I did what you said. I didn't like the job I was in, so I quit. Do you have another job? No, I haven't got my. It's the wrong order. Right? <laughs> uh, first, okay, find the new job first, and then find the old job in mind. All right. All right. Other things you can do 
do uh, to make yourself happier, I think. Uh, forget rankings. You're here. You can learn while you're here. Um, enjoy the people around you while you're here. Have some pancakes while you're here. Um, only a few people are as lucky as you are. And that's another way to be happy, is to recognize how lucky you are and why. Um, so, <laughs> this, if, if this was truly my last lecture, or even <laughs> my pretend last lecture, or something like that, I might tell you what to put on my tombstone. And it might be, here lies a lucky guy. And why am I a lucky guy? I'm a lucky guy for lots of reasons. One is that I get to, oh wait, I get to, Tenure. Tenure gives me the ability to do this. Thank you very much.